I welcome all of you to this ongoing uh, seminar series uh, as an institute lecture series. Before I do the honors of introducing the speaker for this evening for you all, I request Ms. Swati Modi to please uh, present and give flowers to our guest this evening. Okay. Oh, oh. Thank you very much. Thank you. May I now introduce the speaker before you all. Uh, Professor Chopra obtained B.Sc. and M.Sc. in Physics from Delhi University and Ph.D. from University of British Columbia, Canada under World University Fellowship. After working in senior R&D positions for 17 years in different institutions in Canada, Germany and U.S., he joined IIT Delhi as senior professor and served in various senior academic positions as the head of the department and dean. Challenged by the offer of directorship of IIT Kharagpur, he served for two terms of 10 years as an exceptional case and turned the IIT around to its premier place. After retirement, he served IIT Delhi as IRETA chair professor in the area of solar energy. Presently, he is a distinguished honorary professor of several premier academic institutions and advisor and consultant to several industries. Professor Chopra has supervised 60 PhD students, authored, co authored, edited 10 books, published over 430 research papers, held 5 US patents, and transferred 10 know hows industry in the areas related to thin films and nanomatter. And his students have set up 12 industries in related areas in India and abroad. His first book, Thin Film Phenomena, published in 1969, is still considered as the Bible of the field for students. He is recipient of innumerable national awards, which include SS Bhatnagar Prize, Bhava Award, Krishnan, Arya Bhatta, and Mahal Nobis Medal, FICCI, Haseen, and Roy Awards, several honorary DSEs, and Lifetime Achievement Awards of Solar Energy Society, Indian Vacuum Society, Materials Research Society of India, Lifetime Contributions Award in Engineering by Indian National Academy of Engineering, the ISI USS Citation Laureate Award for being one of the eight most highly cited scientists of India. Jeevan Gaurav Puraskar of National Teachers Congress, offered by His Holiness Dalai Lama. He was elected as Fellow of all Science and Engineering Academies of India. Professor Chopra has been conferred Padam Shri by the Government of India for his contributions to science and engineering. With this introduction, I would not like to stand between you and the August speaker for this evening. I now request Professor Chopra to uh, please start. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of you. Uh, my pleasure to be here. I've been associated with the Rurki University and then Rurki IIT for a long time. Uh, in fact, I was a member of the committee which the government of India set up to uh, advise how to transform, translate university into an IIT. And now I'll tell you how the governments work. While the committee was working two times or three times we were here, we were trans seeing what to do. We got a message from the great minister at that time, Murli Minor Joshi. He said, no, no, we know what to do. You all tell us how to pay for 200 crores. So that tells you the intelligence of our ministries, how they want to run IITs. I'm sorry to say, I've, I've been a strong critic of ministries for a long time, so don't, it's not nothing new. And that unfortunately happens even today, okay. Anyway, it's a pleasure to be here back. Thank you very much for inviting me. Okay. Um, we are a scientific civilization. Our health and wealth, indeed, the whole lifestyle today, the way we talk, the way we teach, the way we learn, 
the way we communicate, the way we do business is all changing. It's changing so rapidly that some of it is constructive, some of it is destructive, highly destructive. In fact, our civilization will be changed dramatically by all these changes. Civilization is the, the these are the power that the changes are due to the power of obviously science and technology. These changes are taking place because of the power of science and technology. Science and technology by itself has really is, is so-called ethics neutral. It doesn't really care what you do. It's your business. So it's a user of science and technology and the way it is used, that is critical. And this is what is recognized by the world today that if we continue to change it, our civilization, God knows what will happen to it. We could easily destroy our civilization within days if you want to, even today. If we have wrong people in the world here who can use this, I'm sure the young people particularly, those who spend half of their life with the mobile television know that how digital information, for example, can destroy today. You can create wars today if you want to. So it's a matter, it's a very serious matter which has been recognized by every country or at least sensible country in the world today. And it is because of that thing, it is strongly felt that those who create science and technology must be aware of these values, their ethical values, good or bad. It is now an integral part of academic development, academic education, for example, in, in most Western countries today. We have been, our Society of Scientific Values, of which I'm the president, we've been trying our best to convince our Department of Science and Technology, and Ministry, and UGC to do this for years. After about 15 years, UGC has said, okay, we'll do something about plagiarism. I'm sure you have heard of that thing. UGC, unfortunately, I call, like even this, undergraduate corporation. UGC stands for undergraduate corporation. They cannot think beyond that. You know what they say? Oh, if you plagiarize 10%, you are okay. If you plagiarize 10%, you are okay. 10 to 20%, there will be this much penalty. 20 to 30%, there will be big penalty. How stupid can that be? They don't understand what plagiarism is. You can plagiarize even one or two sentences can be very critical somewhere. Our Bharat Ratna C. N. Rao had to apologize for two sentences in his paper. They were very critical sentences. Critical. He had to apologize. Our Director General of CSIR had to apologize for some critical couple of pages only. So what I want to say is not 10% percent We've been trying to tell them but they don't. They have already I think they have issued this and I'm, I, they want you to implement that thing. It's an absolutely stupid thing. They don't even understand the difference between plagiarism in, in this field or that field. It's, it's a very different, if the bioscience is a different, material science is a different, nuclear is very different. So, This is the issue that I thought I will be talking about. But again, it's a very large issue. So I'll confine my discussion primarily to an area which I know better, that is the research and development that you and I have done, or we, I have done, or my students have done, and you have where this ethics comes in. So uh, it will be limited to that area. Okay. Okay. So the question will be, um, civilization, what is ethics really? I think, okay. I will do that? Okay. I see, I'm going too far. There. So what is ethics? Well, it's a very simple word. It's ethics is a, it's, it's a simply principles. Principles of purpose, essentially distinction between right and wrong is ethics. It's not a religion, not a religious philosophy. Ethics actually really are the soul of a civilization. Civilizations have survived and, and, and died only because of these ethics. When some people forgot their ethics here, the civilization went down. We, particularly young people, should remember our civilization of, of this century today is at that threshold today that if we don't take care of the ethics, we will easily destroy it. You already see that. It doesn't take long. Somebody makes a mistake here and with you, you, can, you can bomb out the whole world today. That's a part of ethics. It's a software there, digital. And, and you know what is happening to the, the apps that you are using. 
most of you are spending maybe at least one third of your life on how you are only on those. You make a mistake and you can do all these things. So, so it's a soul of a society. It's a soul of the system of the society. And therefore, it is of serious concern. And obviously, because of that thing, it is being used extensively in all Western countries. It's compulsory all the way for undergraduate to postgraduate to PhD. They have to go through this course in a different way, but ethics has to be done to them. Physicists, chemists, mathematicians, humanities, everybody is doing it. The reason for that is simply because the power of science and technology is now is not just confined to science and technology. It involves humanities, it involves management, it involves all subjects today. So this is another thing that the IITs still have to learn. That it is not just you become a mechanical engineer, a chemical or a physicist, a chemist. You have to cover all these areas today and that's why it should be compulsory for you to do a little bit of management, a little bit of humanity, a little bit of this and that. We haven't learned that. We are, we are almost 50 years behind the time of Western countries here, what we educate today. We are still bookish. We are still silos of this. A mechanical engineer will only learn that. Despite all the efforts of a lot of people like myself, wherever I go to the IITs and NITs, they say, change the course. No more than 30-40% of your course should be in that discipline. If you are a mechanical engineer, only 40%. Rest should be all different. And there's your choice. A student should have a choice to learn what he or she wants to learn. Learn what she wants to learn at what time she wants to learn. From whom she wants to learn. This is what Western culture is, Western academic is. That doesn't mean to say that it's so free that you will say, how will I organize? It's not at all difficult. Stanford can have 100,000 students. The campuses are no bigger than small, uh, uh, than, than IIT, Khadakur, say, or, or any IIT for the matter, even your IIT is not. How do they manage that? It's, it's not difficult at all, but we haven't changed it. So the directors are sitting here. These are sort of changes that we have to bring about somewhere, okay? So this is a subject that I'm going to talk about that is important, so I'm confining them to, to, to the ethics, okay? Okay, ethics, as I said, as I said, they are soul of a civilization. Civilization has been destroyed, as I said, Romans destroyed that. Well, in a way, our, we had a, a good civilization has been destroyed also many times, changed quite a bit. But people have recognized as early as few hundred BC that you need something like that here. And fortunately, there's a man who is now well known everywhere in the world, even today, remember here. He is, is, a, is a very, very well known uh, Greek uh, physician called Hippocrates. You know, it's unfortunate his word Hippocratic and Hippocrates have come somewhere very close, so you have to worry about it. It was Hippocrates, not Hippocratic, no. So, uh, he's, he is the one who is the father of medicine, considered in Western medicine. He is the one who defined this oath that anybody, anybody who wants to treat other people, doctors and so on, medicine, he or she must take this oath. And it is so important that every doctor in the world, even in India, have to take this oath. Even today, even today, after 2,500 years of okay. And the oath is, I'm not going to read it, but it's, it simply says, I swear by all God and goddesses that I'll help not harm the patient, and so on and so on. May I gain reputation among all men for my life and for my art, and so on. This is even today respected by doctors, but, but not the scientists and engineers today, okay. So, um, let's know, let's define a little bit more of sort of academically. Ethics obviously <coughs> is a very large field, depends on ethics for what, for whom, which society. So therefore, you have fundamental ethics, of course, very common to all human beings. Eskimos have their own ethics, for example, they have to survive there. Indians have their own ethics, their way society is there, for example. There are personal ethics, even in a society uh, of a group of people, they will have their own ethics, for example, how to live together, how to work together. Yes, there are ethics, okay. And there are interpersonal ethics, there are social ethics, there are professional ethics, of course. Professional is, is everybody, physics have, will have a, uh, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, so on. Yeah, these are, and there are ethics, our societies, of our civil engineers, for example, they have their own code of ethics and, and you have to abide. These are not, there are sort of 
fundamental ethics. On top of it, these are special ethics. Okay, they are professional ethics, and of course, there are regulatory ethics also, which regulate the professional ethics. And 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 uh, I know the you, you, the engineers probably know that. Well, you know, well, must have gone through the ethics. Okay, that that you will abide by these rules and rules as a civil engineer, for example. Okay, so. Uh, then of course there are domain ethics now we are called them engineers full domain scientists medical agro and so on so these are the these are the domain. these are the type of ethics okay ethical research has certain ethos very simple ethos i mean this is a simple language more like for high school language yeah there there are basic values that we have to keep in mind for example whatever research you do it should have honesty purpose fairness objectivity openness respect trustworthiness and but it should have an integrity it's ethical research. it should be yes you're not cheating anybody you're not copying anybody and so on and of course uh, uh, don't play with it don't play with the research by by modifying this and that so that's a misconduct for example fabricate falsify plagiarism ghost publications you know the americans call it white bull publication i don't know why they were got the guy was that is somebody else writes for you or you pay money to them i i'm sure you are familiar with i think bhu is very famous there are a lot of lot of students who write thesis for somebody else get paid they go into the bhu library bhu library had a had a policy very liberal policy they would allow you thesis to be taken out i think they have now stopped it because they realize you take it out copy it and then you change it with the computer and so on so so a lot of thesis have been have been written by plagiarizing this these are ghost publications you don't know who wrote it but he got you money on and i i'm sure many of you get emails saying what would you like your thesis on this subject you name the subject will give you in and for this much money is still there even in this country a lot of it is there i'm sure some of you get in the emails okay so there are predatory journals of course that's another problem that we are fighting as a society there are 3000 predatory journals most of them are in china and india and and these are these are placed in in one room apartments in many cities particularly in delhi area that i live in there's an, an area called moti nagar there there are probably 100 of them one room all you need is a computer and uh, you have a permission from stupid called university grants commission they give you 500 rupees you get a permission that you can run it they give you iss and number and isbn number and uh, you pay 2000 rupees and 3 days your publication is on okay they say responsibility is yours if you say uh, somebody points out that your paper is is has been plagiarized they say fine they put a stamp retracted they don't care but you have used it for your phd thesis your publications okay so so this is this is a very serious problem today the two countries on top are china and india on on, on these publications for what we call predatory journal their job is only to get money and they become very rich some of them have already become very rich okay 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 so let's go a little bit more of whatever i just what it means here on ethical research um these are no international definition standardized definition okay for example fabrication obviously you are making up your data your results and uh, uh, you you know recording reporting them and so on it's very easy today with your computer you can do multi you can change around the language this and that you can do that thing the other is a falsification incidentally the the ugc doesn't even recognize in the document if you have seen that you they don't even recognize it they don't even understand they, these are general fabrication policy they don't exist they simply say plagiarism as if that is the only thing plagiarism is only a small thing but clever intelligent people particularly from iit will never plagiarize that way they will use the computer to change the language change the figures oh i have seen students where we had one student here long time ago he taught me that lesson that was that was 30 40 50 years ago he was very clever he he, he got a good job he wanted a phd fast and he left us joined the ongc and then he published papers in and and general applied physics and my students say my god this fellow has never done the work where is he published he just took somebody else changed the axes and y's and so on and, he, and instead of lead sulfide he made tell lead telluride and everything was fine okay so it 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 can happen there okay so uh, plagiarism is is obviously uh, somebody else work you have somebody's results somebody's process for example uh, words from published unpublished 
and uh, then there is the word self prejudice some people say self prejudice is not that bad after all it is your own problem this is not right because you are using the self publication to increase multiply your products and and then you get uh, according to the uh, uh, ugc you can get promotion you have a number of papers i'm sure even iits it can have a number of publication increase so self prejudice is also bad okay um, multiple use of that of the okay then of course there are unethical publications which as i said uh, i have already mentioned some unethical i think there are a lot of people don't know that thing guest gift ghost white bull appeal you can pay money to anybody he will write a paper for you i'm sure some of you get in your internet in your emails also would you like to have a paper written they will write for you fine and you have to pay and i'm going to show you some examples there then there are anonymous authors paid r and d people are they don't know the name and they will write for you thesis is, i think many of you got it you want a thesis written for 3 lakhs you just say the say the subject they will give you subject no problem at all even today particularly in india and china we are we are the great in that i think we have we should get a nobel prize for that okay okay uh, then there are reports predatory and uh, so on then there is such misconduct with legal consequences i just want to tell you which are the projects where where legal consequences you can go to the court against them there are some of them obviously repeat incidentally fabrication falsification they are all covered legally you can go to the court an institute can go to the court but although people refrain from doing it and uh, uh, the it is in the obviously performing uh, interpreting reviewing uh, purchasing research results it constitutes a serious breach of professional and ethical conduct with the legal consequence it has legal consequence so just remember it has legal consequence. a lot of institution don't want to have their name to be you know known to people and i know many universities i get vice chancellor get very ex excited please don't defame us please don't defame us uh, you know our boys are well they're okay they probably made a little mistake don't defame us in fact some of the universities have filed a case against me as a, as a, as a president of the society for scientific values that i am defaming them i won't name the university these are big prominent universities so they said uh, so they send me a legal notice so i send them these are the papers you have you have copied from your suit then they kept quiet they realized they didn't know that they were they were missing them so it's 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 a pretty common feature in many country not only in india and many countries okay all right so um now i'm going to tell you what else goes on after all these are not the only thing they they give these arise out of other actions in the in in the in the conduct of research so i'm going to issue issue list these issues for example i mean there is no harmonious work culture in in most institutions in this country i hope you don't mind what i've said and i'm familiar i'm, I'm i have i have run iit khadakpur for 10 years i i've been in iit delhi as a dean of three three time dean of different types here and i know that there is no i mean in in fact even using somebody else's facilities is difficult even talking with other people is difficult here uh, there is no harmonious work that means nobody helped you to say is it is it a verifiable thing are you okay i mean everybody is 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 an island by itself which is unfortunate you cannot develop ethical values unless you interact unless you you see if anybody has worked abroad here and i'm sure many of you do uh, i worked in canada i worked in germany i worked in usa there there is a seminar at 4 o'clock 4:30 uh, very top people will come i mean in germany it was is a company even the nobel prize will come Uh, although my i did not have much of a german but they said you have to speak some german all right so it's okay i mean you have a fond love at that time i was there he was still alive here i, I mean they are sitting in your front row and they ask questions okay so uh, this is i think uh, it, it gives you you know sort of feeling of elation that you yeah, i'm being appreciated or i'm being told that i'm wrong so we don't do that thing we have seminar but We, 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 nobody wants to be critical because if you are critical you are become enemy of each other okay so this is not there author credit demands author accountability this is a, another issue you have number of authors and if senior most obviously professor is always there and if he is a very aggressive professor he always puts his name first right he, he he will put it in and then when the when the trouble comes in somebody says you know you have copied somewhere oh he says well you know my students have done it i can name number of number of vice chancellors 
I, I am sure you have read the news. They were exposed by us, by our society. The vice chancellor says, no, I didn't do that. I am a vice chancellor. They put my name. Okay. And, uh, and you know they are very... So ultimately, we find out the letter sent by to the editor, physical review in this case here, was signed by the vice chancellor. <laughs> then only... And, and this is a big case. I think everybody will know what, which university I'm talking about. Okay. So, uh, even now, I, I, well, I'm sorry to say, Professor Sien Rao had to apologize for only two sentences. But he also said, I didn't write it. My students wrote it. Well, which is also true. They, they did. But, but obviously, he has a responsibility. His name is there. Okay. So, uh, uh, these things do happen. Okay. Then research student allotment. Uh, so, I, uh, let me mention here, whoever is on the on a paper, for example, is equally responsible. This is a legal requirement. So, don't say that since my name is last year, I'm not responsible. Everybody is responsible. Okay. Uh, allotment of research students, research students, this is, can be quite trivial. It can be a problem of leak inside a, a department here. They don't want to give you a good student, or they don't want to give you a student. This happens, I'm sure. Uh, it's very unfortunate. I, I think I think we should allow a student and faculty to interact and say, I will work only with the student. At least I have tried to introduce at both IIT Delhi and IIT Karpur. You give the student two weeks or four weeks and say, go around, talk with people, who are you on? And then decide, this is the professor I want to work with, this is the subject I want to work with. This lip has to be there. Okay. Uh, Research allotment, uh, student allotment, of course, is always a, a number of students. Uh, every, every institution has rules, all sort of rules here. Some people say four, some people seven, some people two. I don't know what the rule here is. But that, I'm not saying that you should have 20. Uh, I mean, there should be reasonable number, all right. But putting numbers on limits on two, three, four, seven, is, it doesn't make sense here, okay. Because actually, it turns out sometimes if you have a large group, for example, uh, and doing very well. As, as a matter of fact, there's a critical size which does much better than a small size. I mean, I, I have had I have students postdoctoral as many as 40 at one time, but they work day and night. All 24 hours, my labs are open, and somebody is working at night. So we, we didn't never question it when you were, but they, they all there. So, so I think this is these are other issues of this. There's a then verification of data integrity and quality. It's a big question. There's no way to verify that. Even even students together work together. I, I, even if they know, and I, I, I hear, uh, oh, oh, this student is is uh, uh, making up the numbers. Uh, it, it, in any big group, you will find out there's somebody. But 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 there's no way of finding. There's no verification. Nobody verifies you. Whatever your student says, I I think most of you accept that. But I can assure you one thing: not all students are honest simply because they're under pressure. They have to get a PhD in four years or five years, or whatever. And uh, well, if, if they can make the supervisor happy, why not? This is it. And supervisor is happy, his name is there, and the publication is there. So, so this is it. Sharing of facility. This is a, another issue in throughout the country. This is typically Indian here. You have your electron microscope, you are not going to let anybody else touch it. Or make the rules so large that you will keep crying and say, Kab, Kab milega, Kab milega. You know, this is it. This, this, I, I think it's a shameful thing. On the other hand, many of you have gone abroad here. I worked in Germany. And I, I, we never face a problem. We walk in somebody's totally unknown lab and says uh, to the students or the, or the faculty, Sir, I would like to make this sample. I want to study on that thing. Oh, yes, welcome. Only thing is, come tomorrow at this time. Nobody has questioned. No, they, will even ask, they won't even ask you where you have come from. Who are you? Whose student are you? They don't ask that. Simply say that I want to do this. So I think we have yet to learn this special facility problem here. And of course, uh, peer review is, a, is a lesser the said, the better it is, okay. Sharing of intellectual property right is another big question. Although uh, maybe we don't have much of intellectual property right to share, but, but when it comes sharing, it, it is a problem, particularly when there's a money involved here, there's a sharing problem here, who says? Usually the professor wants to put his name first and he, he says, I be chair, okay. So, um, promotions of faculty on the basis, of course, UGC has done so much damage in UGC uh, universities. They have they promoted everybody on the basis of, of uh, uh, number of papers, okay. Um, you know, promotions as, on the basis of that. This is because, you know, they identify 30 or 40,000, I don't know how many predatory journals. And if you publish any of them, you pay 2,000 rupees, you can publish. I've been, I've been advising many private universities, good universities, private. They seek my advice once a month, I go there. 
and I see that surprisingly that they have a lot of publications. I won't name them. And uh, they, I mean, I find out they're all in the predatory journals. Okay? And they all got promoted on the basis of that thing. Okay, so, so this is another rule of the, uh, which they have now, I think, withdrawn the rule, okay. So, uh, of course, the recruitment problems are there. Their assessment problems are there, promotions and awards. These are, these are, these are the part of this thing. Okay. So, um, uh, something that many of you may not know, there are a lot of projects here, and usually the projects are given to senior people, particularly people from IITs, they get the maximum projects, okay. But there's a corruption in kickbacks. I think many of you don't know that, but th this is the problem. Not even today, I'm talking of 30, 40, 50 years ago when I was there, we had projects given to us, but there's always uh, defense. And I have no uh, reason to, to not to tell you that, okay. Defense people will say, there are some people, what is in for us? What is in my student offered a whole technology free on oxygen, generation of oxygen in aeroplanes. There are only two or three countries which have that. And Abdul Kalam was the head of the defense. And he, he said, make a presentation. He made a presentation. Everybody was happy. Big generals were there. They said, we want this technology. After all, we import all the technology. And oxygen in aeroplanes is absolutely necessary. You have to generate oxygen right in there. And one of the major senior persons took him aside, he said, what about our 10 percent? <laughs> this happens. I, I mean, you, don't be shocked. It is, it is. <laughs> uh, lack of accountability, lack of team spirit, of course, this is another thing. We don't, we, we don't believe in team spirit. Today's projects require not only physics or chemistry, mechanical, electrical, sometimes even humanities, even management. We better recognize that. Science and technology has changed dramatically. It requires, it's, it's a broader definition. Humanities are just as important today. And because the application wise, okay. So uh, we, we don't believe in that, we don't talk it. There's nothing like a team spirit, very rare to have team spirits in any institute, including IIT. Very few teams are there, okay. Um, of course, I've said the sharing of intellectual property rights. If you do get money, what do you, how do you do that thing? Uh, there must be some rules, but, but, but it's a very difficult one. Uh, I had a rule that we share, we had a lot of intellectual property, even in 70s. When I left uh, IIT, IIT Delhi for IIT Kharagpur, I left behind 12 lakhs. Okay, and 12 lakhs in, in 87 was a large sum. And uh, it was all for the group. And the group will use it for picnics or whatever they want to use. And everybody who said that Chopra is, is probably manipulating money somewhere. But our money was coming and I didn't want to use it. It's in the, in the name of the, the group. So I think these are, these are sort of things that are not there. Technology development and commercialization, there are problems here. Antiquated uh, financial rules, of course, that's a, that's a typical problem in all, including IIT. Rules, 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 books. We are, we are a country of rules and, and also very primitive rules here. Uh, you have to be flexible enough. Similarly, um, there is a concern and adherence to the standards of, of safe practices. This safe practices doesn't, I, I think some of them we never learned it. I mean, unless it blows up somewhere and, and, and I'm sure all institutions have had those problems of blowing up this chemical or, or this serious electrical accident. Even in my lab, unfortunately, we had one student die electrical. If you're not careful, you are putting 2,000 volts and, and uh, you are not careful, you died and it, it did die in our students, okay. Uh, environment and adoption is where, as I said, is one of the major problems throughout the world. Everything that we do, somewhere it has an effect on environment. And uh, finally, if we have some conscientious scientific worker and he, he blows the whistle, he had trouble. He has trouble. He is not protected. I'm sure he will be thrown out and so on and so forth. So there is a need and we have been talking with the government of India on this. This road, they have an act. They, they have proposed a bill, but the bill has been sitting for 15, 20 years there. Nobody is prepared to do that. Whistleblower is also an important. We must, we must protect them. Okay, okay. I, I thought I, I, I will not spare the leaders of, of R and D. They means obviously professors, senior professors. Uh, there are, there are a lot of problems there. Not only here in the, in the agencies, government agencies, DSTs, and so on. Appointments and promotions of, of oneself and of others, this is a very typical problem and unfortunately is increasing very rapidly in this country. They want their own people only. Unfortunately, this government is, is, is very specializing in this whole thing. Only their own people. They will be one director, they will become this, this. 
rest are, are trivial people. Okay. Uh, manipulating grant proposal and rigging decisions is is very common. Very common. I, I have I've seen uh, in, in DST, I've sat in many, many, many of the meetings, okay. If you have a right person there saying, oh, this is a good, uh, you know, give it. And if, if a big man says that, and I won't name the big man, I'm sure you can guess that, you can get as much money as you want, and people have got money. Okay. So, uh, they are also experts, they, they also advise, and they are not worried about the contract on the conflict of interest. There are no rules, there are regulatory rules and trials, inquiries, examiners. If you have any inquiry, well, it, you know, it will take years and nothing comes out of it. Questionable administrative, managerial, mentoring roles, okay. Uh, that we have to teach. Nobody teaches our, our professors and so on. This administrative role, even, I'm sorry, direct, all our directors should go through a six month training before they become directors. You know, vice chancellors of all the universities in USA, even they, have to go through training one or two weeks before they become vice chancellor, even more. In fact, they appoint a vice chancellor three months ahead of time and he goes and sits there. See, is it necessary? No, it's not demeaning or anything. There are a lot of things here which the government has given you rules and regulations which you have to understand how to, how to, how to use those rules and how to go around those rules. Not everybody knows it. I happen to meet so many directors and so on. I can only say that even in IITs, half of the directors, I would not, I would not recommend them at all. I would not recommend them. Um, questionable administrative management mentoring roles, questionable and biased appointments of vice chancellor and directors. That I think is a, is a, is a, is a becoming more serious problem. Okay. Um, now, intellectual property. I just want to say because intellectual property is becoming important today, um, and uh, uh, obviously we want more patents, but more patents which are translatable into products and processes which bring money. But problem is, it's easy, just like a falsification of paper, we can also falsify pattern, patents also. It's very easy. You can create patterns. And Indians are pretty good. Chinese are even better than, than us. So uh, there are false patents and invention, innovation designers. And there's a word called geographical indicator. You probably know that we, India had a lot of problems with Basmati because there were Indians in USA who claimed uh, that Indian Basmati patterns are no good. They have their own Basmati or they gave some more, I think Texamati, Texamati from Texas. Okay. So, and, and the Indian government has, has to waste a lot of money. I think uh, five million dollars for each patent they have to fight till the government, US government gave in, okay. So this is another problem. You know somebody else's thing and you say, oh, wait, we also produce the same thing. So these are there. There are legal confusion of product and process. This is only a typical Indian. There's no, you don't know the difference between the product and process. The, the two patterns are different. Rules are a bit different here. Product and a process. Sometimes the two are connected because you cannot produce a product without a process. And so you try to patent it. In USA, there's no difference here. It's, a, it's only in India. It, it still is a huge problem, okay. Uh, there's a new problem which, uh, which our Mashelkar got into trouble. He was a DGC as a ever greening up. It. Very clever. All our multinationals come here. Greening means after 20 years or 25 years, whatever the unit, they say that we have added this and we have nailed it and please give us the patent for another 20 years. And that's what why they have been manipulating all our uh, uh, major industri industries that come from abroad here. They are misusing that for a long time. So particularly medicine, for example, pharmaceuticals, for example, they're greening, ever greening. And uh, unfortunately, our DG, uh, was a member of the International Committee and he agreed with them and of course government did not like it and that's why he, have, he got into trouble, evergreening. It still is there, okay. So there are patent leaks and patent thefts. Uh, there are international patent wars. There are, uh, you know, uh, India and China are well known for plagiarism. We are number one and two. And who are the one and two in, uh, in uh, patent wars? USA and Japan. <laughs> this is interesting. A lot of present wars, a lot of very big ones. And uh, I mean, when, when I say big one, these are runs in not millions, billions of dollars. I mean, there was a case between two companies which are making laser coatings, hard coatings for laser mirrors and, and for, for, for warfare and so on. And they were using a technology which was iron beam deposition. Iron beam deposition was first done by, by my group and we have a patent. But my patent had, dis had, 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 had expired at that time here, but they, they 1.2 billion suit of Honeywell versus Lytton. 
and uh, they lost it honeywell lost it and then somebody tells why don't you go to see chopra so they came to me and said yes we have done it already so i had to give a certificate that we have done it show my papers and so on so they they saved 1.2 billions on their visit only thing they gave me is 20000 dollars only on, on signing that pen but what i want, what i want to say is that uh, these patents where where there's a lot of money involved here and that between japan and, and and now of course korea is also involved in it okay uh, there is no lack of there is a lack of code of conduct of filing i i think we just don't teach anything at all uh, in, in, in patents are also part of science and technology okay okay uh, quickly very example this i'm sure you have seen in the newspaper today you can see what is happening even today this is the uh, right everybody seen this in newspapers no anna university great see <laughs> uh, they have 10 professors have been no book they are, they are giving you more marks uh, you know if you give money to the student give more money they give more 10 professors have been caught up okay, this is uh, well <laughs> if is happening in anna so just imagine what's happening in uh, this is another report uh, i think a little older now but just to tell you um, who are who is publishing in in these journals of plagiarism i call them journals of plagiarism you pay 2000 rupees you get published and this is a shocking thing in it iit is at 11% i think national il 11% can you believe that iits are also involved in that csi are at 15% <laughs> oh my god and private universities of government guys the 51% they are there so so we are all involved so don't say that we are iits we are very pure and so not so not so okay okay <laughs> all right um it's a global phenomenon i thought i gave you some examples these are some old one just to show you the give you the flavor of what is happening in china is is of course very famous for that they they advertise very freely they say oh you want your first name in a medical paper you want your name you haven't done the work but you, they say would you like to have your name in that paper all you have to pay is some 26000 dollars will put you there and that's officially done there is a, in the newspapers has been going on so this is what the, similarly uh, springer of course has, has has already done a lot on the uh, they have hundreds of published paper they have been uh, retracted and so on uh, you know i triple e i'm sure some of you do that thing it's a shameful thing i triple e has a confidential report we get it confidential report from them they are not very happy with with india also there are about 100 papers every year they retract and these are papers from india of course i triple e has a lot of journals a okay? lot of journal 100 papers from india are being retracted the word retract means only they were plagiarized the only thing is the americans are very clever they don't put they don't say plagiarized because you can go to the court in usa and court means the i triple e will be running around and paying money and so they don't they don't want to get involved in legal thing so they simply say retract put a stamp on it but retracted paper invariably means they have been plagiarized okay okay so okay oh money spending money in projects is a big problem and throughout the world here i, I think this is again from usa and particularly the bio people i hope there are some bio people here because bio people are the one who spend a lot of more money than anybody else does these days so here is a complaint that there 28 billion dollars have been produced uh, has an irreproducible work in 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 some of the areas by whatever these are areas okay i i i mean and um, i think uh, on and human cancer okay 28 billion and nothing come out so far and even in usa so they are, they are complaining about it we have agency like department of science technology which i call department of special treatment if you know the chairman of the committee you know that you can get as much money as you want i mean we had one professor who only wrote slip of four lines say i want so and so electron microscope costing costing so many uh, millions of rupees billion billion <laughs> and he got on four lines electron microscope the only one of its kind in india at that time okay just to so so this this sort of thing happens uh in india as well as even today i'm sure dst even though my friend is a is a vice is a dst secretary but he says what can i do the committee is recommends it and as you committee you have good friends here you can get anything done okay if you don't know anybody you 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 forget it okay okay um some disruptive industry am i doing all right time by 10 minutes 
huh? Ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. Okay. I think I asked for at least one hour or. No, 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Okay, I better go faster. Um, I just want to tell you what are the what are the technologies which are which are going to uh, make or break our civilization. Uh, I won't elaborate them quickly, but but I will give them. First and foremost is obviously uh, information technologies. I don't think I mean you are all spending half of your day on your mobile telephones and so on. That information technology can make us and break us also. The artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, uh, all these you can have uh, cyber wars and it's already taking place. Okay, medical sciences can go up and down whichever way go, and then the biodiversity uh, uh, big question mark in our country here plants and so on fruits and so on is, is a problem. Do we get the hybrids and gene uh, controlled ones? Nanotechnology, I, I, I will elaborate a little more. Don't think it is, 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 is something that is going to save us. It, it can be pretty serious matter, uh, in, and I'll, I'll show some examples there. Of, okay, nanotechnology, you can be. A, it is a problem in defense. It's a problem in health. It's problem in, in safety issues here. Then you have global warming, carbon bombs, so on, extreme uh, climates and water resources, space technology. Don't think space technology is is, is very helpful. The way it is going on, with Chinese are going on, they can they can they can bomb you from planet. You probably will never know about it. Okay, space espionage, space wars, uh, chemical, biochemical, nuclear, and nanotech nanotech wars are there. Nanotech war. I, I, I want you to mention that. Nanotechnology can kill all of us without even you knowing it. If I was clever here, if I bring in those nanoparticles and I I just throw it like that, you will not see them. You don't have a microscope. You will all be sick. Within the next two hours, we all sick. I don't know whether you know it. Experiments have already been done by the Americans. Okay, so it's okay. Um, then you have end of life products problems here. Nobody, nobody cares about that thing. You are the people who are using 1.2 billion mobile telephones. You throw away one third of 1.2 billion means what? 30, 40 million batteries, lithium batteries. Do you know where you are throwing? Nobody knows. No. You fellows are not worried about it. I, I think you simply throw in your waste paper basket and goes there. It's a, it's a very serious problem. First of all, lithium is, is anyway so rare now we we have a problem, but everybody is throwing. You have thrown a lot of TVs. You have thrown a lot of your your glass. Any uh, even LEDs. Uh, the, 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 there is a glass there. Everything is thrown glass. All those three four million or thirty I think thirty million TVs. Those big ones have been thrown. Each one of them has about four kilograms of glass, three or four kilograms of lead. Nobody knows. The government doesn't know it. You people don't know it. You don't care about it. So those are already become very serious problems. Okay, uh, these are called end of life products. We haven't even started doing that work yet. We haven't started doing. What do we do with the glass that is being thrown? What do we do with that thing? What do we do with the lithium bar? We need lithium badly. We don't. We don't. So okay. All right. Um, these are the revolutions that I, I think digital revolutions are going on. I, they are repetition a little bit, but I think essentially, Internet of Things, uh, cyber terrorism, cyber wars, cyber piracy, cyber espionage, data sciences, data mining, data analytics already in news, data analytics, artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and now the latest is blockchain technology. I want to elaborate that. I wish you could. They, I, I think you are also going to start blockchain technology. I think some of the IITs have started courses. They should be. There is no doubt. But we need, need blockchain technology. All the solar cell technology should go to blockchain technology. Villages should be connected to that. And I believe in it. I am going to write to the prime minister on their blockchain technology. But it has less problems. Okay. Uh, so nanotech. I, I said. I, I since the time is limited, I only say nanoparticles so small you can only see with the electron microscope. If I bring in here a, a fraction of a gram of nanoparticles and just load it like that, they will just go around and they go through your nose. You will never know it. You can become sick within the next two hours. The Americans have done the experiment. They did it by mistake. They had an aeroplane. They wanted to see what will happen if you. But by by the wind took those those planes into another village or another town, and they all became sick. All became sick. So so it can. So you can do whatever you want to, but this is one of the things that you can do. Okay, uh, so I won't go into that. But but 
but to simply say it is going to nanotech is going to solve all the problems is a very foolish idea. It's not nanotech is not new. Nanotech, we people like me have been doing in 1960s and 70s. We've been doing nano. All thin films are nano. There's no question about it. Okay. All right. So uh, biotechnology has also. I'm not. Uh, uh, I think there are. You have several departments of biotechnology here, so it should be mentioned here. There are very serious problems. Is it a boon or a, or, or a bane? Actually, biotechnology happens to be also a boon and a bane at the same time. So these are big questions here. What do we do? Biofuel, bioweapon, a mass destruction, bioethics. Uh, quantum biology is coming, biocomputers are coming, so what will happen to that? Whether GM or not GM, I think these are big question marks, okay. So um, uh, I, I think I, I'll have to go a little further. This is another thing that, that the, of course, our engineers are great at it. Instead of doing experiments, they do modeling. This has become a very, another disease. They don't want to dirty their hands, uh, so, so they do modeling. Please remember here, in modeling, garbage in, garbage out, if you don't put the data properly. Somebody has to make those measurements and process the parameters okay properly, otherwise they And this is happening so common. It is becoming so common. There are a lot of papers published on this. In any field, almost any field today is becoming a very easy sort of thing, okay. Um, there is a global concern. I won't say, I will quickly go The Global concern is that everybody is worried today. All major Western countries make it mandatory today to teach ethic, ethics in science technology at all levels. A BSc, MSc, PhD, uh, all students. All students means even humanities student, we had math student, they all have to go through that. But in a different way, not, not in the bookish form, by discussion, by discussion case studies, for example, okay. And usually senior people are invited, they say, this is the case, what will you do with it, for example. So, uh, but unfortunately, we have only UGC has just issued out a, a document and uh, it's a very myopic. We have given a lot of comments on it, but don't. So, uh, almost every country has now uh, agencies we deal with it. Some offices, we don't have it. We are, we are working, we, our society is trying to bother the government that, you know, please do something about it, but they haven't done it. But there's a need for that thing. So, um, all right. Um, there's an there's a international academy, uh, internet academy. Uh, they advise all the academies in the world uh, science Academy to come out with a document for their own country. Well, we have uh, we have four academies and they have come out the, uh, I'm a fellow of all the academies, okay, but uh, you know what they've done. Having said, they said, oh yes, you know, we are the only, we have the, India has the only constitution in the world which talks about ethics. Interestingly, I don't think many of you know about that. It's a 54A element, uh, 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 in, in the Indian Constitution, there's a article, Article 51A. It shall be the fundamental duty of every citizen of India to develop scientific temper, humanism, and spirit of inquiry and endeavor. This is what, what, what actually is all due to Jawaharlal Nehru. This is okay. So it's there. Do we teach that? Do we tell that? Nobody is. We're the only country we have. But then we are great. We have all sorts of documents, fantastic documents in time, science and technology. In, 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 in education, best documents anybody has ever produced, but we don't implement them. So, uh, and our academies are great. As I said, I'm a fellow of the academies, but they are great. They say, oh yes, not only we have a, we have, we have a, an article in our constitution, we also have Rabindranath Tagore with us. After all, what did he say? He says, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments of narrow domestic walls and so on and so forth. Into that heaven of freedom, let my country wake. So he said, after all, Jawal, uh, Tagore said, we should be, uh, our knowledge should be free and we should use it. Okay? So we are great in hiding ourselves in, among the documents. Okay. Okay. Um, who cares for ethical values? I have already said, nobody seems to care. We have a lot of problem with the with directors, vice chancellors, we write to them and they are always saying, First, they ignore you. They don't reply. It's just because they happen to know me, Chopra, and Chopra will not spare them. So they finally say, oh, no, no, we are not. We, our student, our faculty is very good. They don't do these things. So they ignore, deny, diffuse, cover up, dilute, even threaten me also. Are, why are you bothering us all the time? Disperse and then defer. This is a typical of yours. It took three years to remove two vice chancellors of central universities last year or so. It took three years with the ministry, with the president, because the president comes in the picture. They just want to move it. Even the president said, let them resign. 
सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी पांडिचेरी टोटल फैब्रिकेशन ऑल थीस ऑल पब्लिकेशन ऑल प्लेजराइज ओके सो इट इट्स अ प्रॉब्लम आई नो बडी वॉन्ट्स टू एडमिट दैट वी वी आर डूइंग रॉन्ग थिंग आई थिंक वी हैव टू लर्न टू बिकम यू नो ऑनेस्ट विद अवर सेल्फ विद अवर सोल सो आई थिंक एवरीबडी से इज नॉट माई प्रॉब्लम वेन एवर राइट टू एनी वाइट चांद इज नॉट माई प्रॉब्लम सो ओके finally I, i this is not part of my lecture here but my daughter showed me something uh, i i think it is in in the in the website i am sure so many of you how ethical so i put a title to it how ethical is our educational system you can see for what what it says the great teacher is is telling everybody whether you are a monkey or a horse or something go you know, who will climb it uh, who will climb that fastest so you will give marks according to the speed at which they will okay this is what we do in all our teaching be it undergraduate be it postgraduate marks marks cbse marks and mark we never understand everybody has a different taste let us give them choice let a student learn what he or she wants to learn wants to learn when she wants to learn where she wants to learn from whom what is wrong with it why haven't iit is opened up and say okay we, i mean we will have places 10 20 30 whatever students from another place can come and spend a semester here take a course which is unique we have not done it delhi uh, jnu and iit are, are common border common border but they don't talk with each other they don't even exchange views they don't even attend anybody's lecture they don't this is i think something that but we are very happy to have 100 agreements abroad i don't know how many agreements you have but certainly iit kanpur has probably the maximum number he comes iit kanpur iit delhi has agreements with everybody in the world but not with your neighbor not with delhi you know not in there i think uh, and and this education system is actually come from the very old age here we expect everybody to learn the same thing ratify the same thing go to the same examination we why don't we give a choice an mit student an mit student in computer science and i give you some examples says all right i've taken this much computer i don't want any more of that thing i want to do commerce i want to do how insects are grown there are two students who said i we want to learn how insects are grown and after graduating they set up an insect farm insects for eating this is a new trend now there will be insect farm for eating because they have they have they are more more food, uh, food value are good and they have become billionaires already here is an mit graduate in computer science he said no i have learned this much computer this is enough i want to please tell me any iit why can we not allow our students say okay this lecture is given at this time by so and so in this room and it will take only 60 students well whoever comes takes it it will be repeated next time you can take this you can do in third year second year why not i'm sorry director sir <laughs> i'm not creating a revolution but it has to be done so uh, this is the part of ethics if you want to people to be ethical then you give them a little choice of learning what they want to learn and use it for the benefit of mankind when mankind benefits they also benefits and i hope i hope this iit will also introduce a course on ethics very uh, not formally not formally but informally take some examples and discuss it in fact uh, the best way to do is in the american way they sit below a tree during during lunch break bring their own sandwiches and then then the senior person raises the question here what will you do if this happens here and all sort of questions so this is how they learn i hope i hope you start something something of that process thank you very much